Hello, Chris Becky. Yeah. What? How do you get stuck in the soccer net? Yeah. I can get there. Can you just text me the address? That'd be great. All right, thank you. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bizarre. Rescued pelicans, penguins, ducks, all sorts of things. Never had to go and rescue a black swan in the middle of suburbia. Quite strange, but there you go. Chris has been called out to a northern Sydney suburb for a wildlife emergency. Hey, how hey Chris, how are you? You're Shelley, right? Yeah, yeah. How are you? Thanks so much for coming. That's yeah, we're right. just a bit worried. We've got this um, swan that came into our back garden this okay. morning. So the kids were really excited because they obviously wanted to pat the swan, but we realised that there was something really wrong with it because it couldn't really walk very well. The poor little thing got actually got himself caught in the soccer net and got his whole head and neck caught through one of the squares. Hey, mate. We could actually pick him up. Um, yeah. We actually was cuddling him this morning because he was so scared and... All right, let's get him shot. Oh. No, All right. Shelley and her family have done a great job in rescuing the swan, but my worry right now is what happened when he was stuck in that soccer net. He could have so easily damaged his neck or his wings. I want to examine them right now, but the moment I get close, it's really clear just how distressed he is. He's quite weak, he shouldn't really just let me do that. Yeah, I'll get you back, back, yeah, sure. He wants to get rid of me and leave himself there to rest, but we have to check him out and work out why he's walked into this backyard in the first place, but then why he just can't fly away. It just really worries me that the fight goes out of him so quickly. Yeah. The swan's condition is deteriorating fast. Chris is worried the bird is running out of time. His heart rate's quite slow. Yep. He's not in a good way. He's incredibly weak and just really struggling to even just to keep himself standing there. Brutus is as big as this boat. That's a little bit scary. <laughs> Tim and Obi are investigating some trouble in the Australian Reptile Park's Alligator Lagoon. Bad boy Brutus has started fighting the old male gators for territory and harassing the females. Right. Most of the time they get along and there's a real social hierarchy from big boys right down to tiny little hatchlings. Now Brutus is at that point in his life where he's ready to become top dog. This fella up here. The risk is if we leave Brutus that he's going to try and throw it over these old boys. That's going to end in serious injury, possibly death. Ah, that's our gator. Look, he's just sitting there, standing his ground, doesn't want to move. Everyone else is scattered and the king's just holding his ground. Hey, hey, hey. And mate, we've got so many injuries in here. We've got gators with torn legs and shoulders and everyone's just so tense, he's got to go. We can't catch Brutus in the water, even though we're only a metre from him now. There's a few risks. One is that he pulls us straight in. Two is that if we happen to get a rope on and let's say Brutus was too strong and he pulled away, he could then be stuck underwater with a rope wrapped around his head and we don't want that. Tim now has the difficult task of trying to entice this deadly killer to the bank so he can be captured. Righto mate, we'll see you in a little while. If we don't take Brutus out now, what we face is a lot of injuries, a lot of stressed out gators and just not a happy pond in general. Brutus has to go. I was worried he might have hurt his neck in the soccer net. Yeah. Back in Sydney's north, Chris's concerns about the swan's survival are growing. He's just got some discoloration in his mouth there, so that'll happen when he is weakened, so his own immune system isn't able to clear out the gunk in his mouth and he's more prone to infection. He's also just got a little bit of discharge coming out of his nose, so fluid coming out of his nostrils. He's just got some bugs running through his feathers too, so 
they only really take hold when they are weakened. So this is something he's been battling for a while now. Yeah. This one looks like he's close to death. The decision he made to stumble into Shelley's backyard, it was a last resort, but hopefully it saved his life. Look, I'm, I'm quite worried about him. Yeah, yeah. He's actually in an incredibly bad state. For him to sit like that. Yeah. He's a real worry. So I don't even want to wait till I get back to the clinic to treat him. I want to actually start now. Yep. Yeah. He doesn't even look like he's got much time, to be honest. What have we got? Chickens. The little right. Yep. Yeah, there's some extra road. Beauty. Are we confident two of us are going to be enough? No, but I've got a little plan. At the Australian Reptile Park, bad boy Brutus has been terrorising the other alligators in the lagoon. This 400 kilo predator needs to be removed before his attacks turn lethal. Everyone's tense. We've had injuries in females, young males, old males, and that's because of Brutus. He's got everyone on hot coals because he's testing all the old males. There you go. Yep, we've got everything. Yeah, this is everything. If we don't take Brutus out now, what we face is a lot of injuries, a lot of stressed out gators, and it'll end in death. And that's not something that we want to happen. Tim to Kyle. Yep, Tim. Mate, why don't you pop out uh, backside of the Gator Lagoon? No problem, Tim, I'll be straight there. Kyle's worked with gators, but not like Brutus. Jeez, he's quick. Hey, mate. Hey, Tim, hey, Ebs, what's going on? Uh, we got a treat for you today. Oh, what's going on? Kyle doesn't know it yet, but this rookie keeper is about to receive his first lesson in gator capturing. With the little ones, around the metre size, um, I have handled a bit, but ones this size, not very much experience at all. Take this. Oh, oh, oh. Come on. This is Brutus. Come on. That's a gator all the way up. Come on. Good. Yep. That's good. Kyle, jump on. Okay, one more. One, two, three. Okay, Kyle, you keep that tension on. Obes and I are going to go around. You right, mate? One, two, three. Obes, on. Get hold him, mate. Wrap it around that tree, buddy. I'd like to know what's behind us, mate. Brutus has now been captured, but the hard work isn't over yet. This big boy now needs to be moved to his new home and he's not giving up without a fight. You get ready to jump, because he's just going to roll with me. OK, he's going, he's going. You can just Kyle on, jump on, mate. He can't even support his head now on yeah. the, his neck. So this is getting a bit urgent. Back in suburban Sydney, Chris is desperately trying to save the life of a black swan that staggered into this backyard. We're going to give him some fluids. I've got some saline here we're going to put underneath his skin, just as a way of rehydrating him, and hopefully that'll give him a little bit of a boost. But more importantly than that, we're trying to buy some time, because in this state, he, he's, he's no chance. It was Shelley who called Chris for help after finding the bird trapped in a soccer net. We were quite surprised because we've never seen, obviously, a swan in our back garden. I mean, there's lots of swans at um, Lane Cove National Park, which is kind of close. Um, we thought it might have flown in from there, but because it was so injured, we were really worried how it actually got here in the first place. The most likely thing happening here is that he, just through absolute exhaustion, through not being able to find enough food at this time of year where it's breeding season and a lot of swans are getting quite territorial. Okay. He's had to shift around and he just hasn't been able to find a home. His final last desperate act was just to go searching for somewhere else, yeah. somewhere else to live and somewhere else to eat. And that's where he's, he's found yeah. here. The fluid has bought the bird some valuable time, but now Chris needs to determine what's making the swan so ill. Let's just check out his neck. Just with their long neck, they are prone to neck injuries, but he seems to be moving his neck OK. <laughs> Both wings can actually operate quite well, but right now, there's just no way that he has the energy to, to flap those wings enough to get off the ground. Yeah. So out in the wild, in this condition, he just wouldn't be able to survive. I mean, a dog would attack him or, or he just wouldn't be able to feed himself and, and would, would die as a result of that. But this is really his last chance now. 
he is quite skinny. When I feel along his, his breast muscle there, there's not much of it there. And even his legs are really skinny. What's really strange about his feet is that for a, a bird that is so incredibly good at flying, he's worn away the skin on his feet. So he's been walking around a lot. And that's a pretty desperate act for a bird when you can fly while you walk. This poor guy is in a terribly weak state. My hope is he doesn't have any internal injuries. The fluids I've given him will certainly help, but he needs further treatment if he's got any chances of surviving. The plan now would be to get him back to the clinic as soon as we can and, and really check him out and see if there's no other problems going on there and, and get him some food. Really start to rebuild his energy because he needs it. At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, Hero appears to be in perfect health, but looks are deceiving. He's lost his appetite today, so very unlike a Labrador. So um, we suspect he has ingested rock. The one-year-old Labrador has been vomiting all day. Owners Sally and Michael are worried Hero's been up to his old tricks, eating rocks from their backyard. He'll eat anything he can get his mouth onto, so. Yeah, that's why. Just in case we'll bring him in. Hello, I'm Lisa. Hello, Hero. What's wrong, buddy? It always amazes me how Labradors can be really, really sick and they just look like nothing's wrong. <laughs> he doesn't look, look like, like a it. sick boy. They have such an ability to hide things and keep that tail wagging and pretend like everything's okay. The fact that they're such good actors can actually be quite dangerous for them. Something is a little bit uncomfortable for him here. His intestines just feel a little bit thick. They eat everything. I've seen them eat socks, underwear, sanitary items, rocks, balls, toys, you name it. A Labrador can swallow it whole and it never surprises me what I find inside them. When I get to a certain part of his tummy, mm. he tends to flinch. And I think what we need to do is take some x-rays of him. When I'm feeling him, it just it doesn't feel right. That there is something really hard there. And if something is stuck, then that could potentially perforate through his intestines, cause a condition called peritonitis, which is life-threatening. And I really hope that Hero doesn't get to that stage. Yep, sure. So what we got? Neil meet Wayne. Wayne? Wayne meet Neil. At the Bondi Clinic, Chris has arrived with the critically ill swan. So, no, he's just very weak. But before treating the bird, Chris has decided his new patient needs a name. We've decided to call him Wayne, as in Wayne Swan, the ex-Australian Deputy Prime Minister and Treasurer. We just got a little bit political. Good way to guarantee that Wayne only has half the people around here like him. Whoop. Straight away. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. Really smelly. So, no obvious injuries, wings are intact, neck's fine, but just very weak. A bit uncoordinated as well. Yep. So I'm thinking the wobbliness is more to do with the fact he's just very low in energy and just stumbling around. Yep, yep. But I just want to check out his belly, just make sure there's no, no foreign bodies, no hooks, no sinkers. An X-ray will confirm if Wayne has any internal injuries. X-ray. Right, straight away we can tell there are no metal objects sitting in the stomach. The digestive system, that'd be really glowing, a, a really bright white. The really obvious thing to me is just how skinny he is. There's no grey areas of muscle. It's just either bone or it's feathers or it's air and there's really nothing else. He's a young male, it's breeding season. He's having to work incredibly hard to find his own little territory where he may be able to breed with a female. But the thing about the city is there's so little space. The search has come up empty. It's been a long time between meals for Wayne and he's just really struggling obviously to, to make do with what he has and what he has is, is very little. This way, we're going this way. 
Hero, this way. Come on. Come on. So the next step is to actually take an x-ray of Hero and I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Come on Hero, this way. This dog has complete control of me. He is taking me for a walk. He is taking me for the x-ray. I don't know how I'm gonna even get him on the table. At Sash, Lisa is trying to work out if the lovable Hero has managed to swallow rocks from his backyard. Vic, are you free to help with this very <laughs> sick dog? In reception, owners Sally and Michael are anxiously waiting for answers. Hero's been vomiting and even turned down food. Three, two, one. You lie down on your side. Hey, hey, hey. Hero, come on. Labradors are very, very good at pretending that something's okay when it's really wrong. <laughs> oh dear. I thought I felt something funny in there. But that's a really massive rock there. Another little fragment of something there and perhaps even another one further down there. So this rock is about three to four centimetres big. So it's like that. So he's obviously swallowed that hole. It's gone down and now it's lodged somewhere in his intestines. That is a worry, Vic. If that rock stayed in there and it didn't pass out naturally or we didn't take it out with surgery, the intestines would become really inflamed and unhealthy uh, and in really severe situations they can perforate. The rock can basically open up the guts and um, he's just got intestinal contents leaking through his abdomen. That's life threatening so it's pretty serious to have something stuck in there that doesn't come out. He had botulism, he shouldn't really be able to constrict his pupil here. Back at the Bondi Clinic, Chris's examination of Wayne is continuing, and he has a suspicion about what's causing the swan's severe condition. Probably the most worrying thing about Wayne right now is that that muscle weakness and that lack of coordination that he has, to me, it looks a lot like botulism. Now, botulism is a toxin that attacks the nervous system. The only way to manage it in a bird like Wayne is to give him plenty of rest, plenty of food and plenty of care, really 24 hours a day, for as long as it takes for him to get over that toxin. There's a really slight reaction there. If it is botulism, I think it's in its very early stages or very mild form, just because he still is able to support his neck most of the time. Look, I think supportive treatment with fluids and, and nutrition is probably going to be the answer. Yeah. So, we're essentially giving him <laughs> Chook pellets, so the thing about chook food is it's incredibly high in protein and energy and also vitamins and minerals. Wayne is on the brink of absolute exhaustion, so he's gonna need a bit of a hand. That hand is gonna be mine. Wayne, I swear my long fingers become very, very handy. Don't shake your head. Getting that food into him and keeping it down isn't as simple as it seems. Get ready to jump, because he's just gonna roll with me. Okay, he's going, he's going. You can just pile on, jump on, mate. Let Obes work there for a minute and just jump on, just smother him, mate. That's it. At the Australian Reptile Park, Tim, Obi, and Kyle are struggling to restrain Brutus. That'll stop him rolling. That's it. The 400 kilo killer has been attacking the other gators in the lagoon and needs to be removed. If he rolls, mate, yeah. you just get your foot out from under him. Don't keep it under there or he'll, he'll snap it. He'll snap it. No problems. He's a good boy. Yep. Not so tough now, hey buddy. Not so tough now. Oh, bit of commotion. Maybe that was a celebration of the uh, removal of Brutus. One, two, three. That's it, mate. Good job. Again, one, two, three. Once we've caught Brutus, that attracts interest from the other gators. They think it's feed time and they're moving in. And that's not something that we want to happen. Throw us a stick, we don't want him up. St stay away, buddy. Hey, hey, hey. Stay away. Watch that little one or to your side, mate. I'd say here comes the aeroplane, but for a bird that can't fly, it's not really that funny for you. 
at the Bondi Clinic, feeding Wayne is proving to be a real challenge. How's the finger? Taste all right? The worry you always have with these birds with the very long necks is that they've got a great regurgitation reflex. If he's not liking the food or if it's just too stressful for him to handle, as quickly as it goes down, he'll just bring it straight back up. So each time I feed him, I'm just really keen to keep his head nice and high. Here on. All good. A little napkin for that. Mm. It's been a huge day for Wayne, but it's not over yet. Chris now needs to clear the swan of the lice attacking his body. Should we get rid of those parasites? No, no, I would say yes. It's a yes. No, no, it's, it's definitely a yes. Be unlike a politician to lie, I know, but in this situation, it should be a yes. Parasites? It's crawling on me. Yeah, I know. How big is it? Wayne's decided to share the parasite love with new best friend, Neil. No, it's, it's not head lice, but it's, it's a feather louse. So. Squish it! I get it? Yeah. That's what you had in me. Ooh. It looks like it's been pregnant. You may have eggs in there now. Don't. Oh. They hatch pretty quickly. Sweat so the barbers, know. shave my head. Chris now needs to worm Wayne. Okay. It didn't taste so good, did it? Then begin the final stage of the swan's treatment. The lice you can see on Wayne are really a sign that his own immune system just hasn't been coping because he should be able to get rid of those himself. But with this spray, we'll be able to get rid of the ones that are on him right now and, and hopefully, once he gets some food into him, he'll be able to take care of the rest. Hey mate, this should ease the stress, Wayne. I really should. We've done everything we can now to help Wayne, but the fact is he's so incredibly weak, he can't even flap his wings. So he's got no chance right now of being returned to the wild. Wayne will stay overnight recuperating at the clinic. If he's well enough tomorrow, he'll go into the care of rescue organisation Wires. Plenty of food, plenty of fluids. Without those parasites trying to suck the energy out of him, then he's a much better chance now of actually making a full recovery. Tim, the other big male's coming under now. OK. Stay away, buddy. Hey, hey, hey. Stay away. Watch that little one on to your side, mate. Hey, off you go, please. We don't want you up here. At the Alligator Lagoon at the Australian Reptile Park, Brutus's capture has attracted a lot of unwanted attention. Off you go, mate. They're hungry and they're quick, so it's a dangerous mix. Ooh. It's a bit daunting having him sit in there and big male gators right here. With the deadly onlookers now at a safe distance... Tim to Jules. Tim calls for backup to help move the 400 kilo predator to his new home. Oh, we're gonna need an army of guys to move Brutus, Jules. We're out here now. He's all tied up and you better get Big Johnny. Yeah, we'll be there as soon as possible. If we don't take Brutus out now, what we face is a lot of injuries, a lot of stressed out gators. Hey, gang. We need everyone, all hands on deck, just to lift him. Then we've got to move him. Yeah. Hold him. Okay, let's go. We had eight to 10 people on that board. Let's say we're carrying 50 kilos each and we're struggling. Oh, hang on. Right. We start walking and very soon we're in mud, holes, trees, logs, rocks. Two, three. Righto, we'll get a little bit more help, hey? We need more help, so we call in extra people again. That's it. I fell in luck. One more. That's it. Oh, this is a big 400 kilo gator. Everyone down? Stupidest thing we've ever decided to do. What's wrong, Abes? Oh, I'm a wee bit unfit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Yep, on the trolley. What's your fingers, guys? This lagoon is not designed for taking big gators out. It's horrible getting them out. Well done. All right, ready? Yep, just go easy, mate. Nice oh, easy. yeah? We've got to go over fences, and then we've got to take Brutus into the park area, the main park area with all the visitors. And very quickly they swarm. They all want to see Brutus. All right, guys. Hop right. on back there. We're going to lift him up now. Ready? One, two. Just sit him down, guys. We can slide. 
That's good, guys. That's enough. Just sing out if you need anything. You right, boys? Oh. We're good to go, yeah. mate. OK. Hold on. <laughs> Oh dear, that thing is so big and rugged and I don't think it's going to move, so poor Hero's going to need surgery. At SASH, X-rays have revealed that Hero has swallowed a large rock and it's threatening to perforate his intestines. Lisa now has to break the news to his devoted owners, Michael and Sally. Come on, buddy. I cannot believe that you are sick. My goodness. All right, so... Unfortunately, it looks like he's got a big rock in his intestines. OK, so it's about this big. Now, sometimes if the rocks are small, we can watch them and see if it will pass. And I think it's worth giving him a chance to see if he does pass it by himself. But my gut feeling tells me that it's too big to fit through. And I think that he probably will have to have surgery. OK. Now, if we do nothing and it stays there, it will wear through his intestines and there's even a chance it's already done that. We just need to be very, very careful and watch him closely. Hero now has a 12-hour deadline to avoid major surgery. If the rock hasn't moved by tomorrow morning, the Labrador will have to go under the knife. Never really wanted him to have an operation because operation's never good like in the long term, so... Yeah. Yeah, sad. <laughs> right, -o, let's get him in his home. Two, three. Oh, wait, guys. That's it. Aggressive alligator Brutus is being moved into isolation after attacking his neighbours at the Australian Reptile Park. Stay right up in that bush there. Guys, a big drop off behind uh, my side here. <laughs> it's proving to be a logistical nightmare. Go down. No. It's taken 30 minutes and 10 staff to move this massive 400 kilo gator to his new home. It's going to take the gators a couple of days to realise that Brutus is not there. He's a real stirrer and he goes gator after gator after gator just testing them, see if he can put it over them. Uh, they're going to be pretty relieved when that doesn't happen today. Right, mouse through. Yep, I'm off, mate. Good, you're right. I'm off, I'm off, I'm way back. Brutus, in a very short time, will own that pen. In you go. That's what happens with, with big territorial males. Anywhere they go, they turn it into their territory and they own it. We don't mind if Brutus does that up there because he can't hurt anyone else. Yeah, I know you're not happy. Everyone else will be. Time will tell whether we put him back into this lagoon, his gator lagoon, or he may need to stay by himself for a while. See you, mate. Just get focused, you might be having surgery today. Next morning at SASH, Hero is still blissfully unaware of how close he is to going under the knife. Poor oh, Hero. We just have to take an x-ray of Hero today as a precaution because we're all prepped and ready to take him into surgery. We want to make sure that the rock is where it was yesterday. Hey, Hero. Hero, just stay here. The one-year-old Labrador has a dangerous habit of eating rocks. This time, he's got himself into a lot of trouble. Look, the rock is about four centimetres big and it was stuck in his small intestines. I really don't think that that rock has moved at all. All right, so this is Hero's last chance to avoid surgery. Hear that, Hero? This is it. Oh, wow. That is amazing. This rock or bone or whatever it is has gone all the way from his small intestines down into his large intestines, into his colon, and it's sitting now in his rectum. It's like that far of coming out on its own. Wow. Hero has dodged one bullet, but getting out that rock is going to be no walk in the park. 
I don't think that this is going to be a pleasant thing for him to be pooping out. It looks pretty rugged and rough on the edges and um, it's four centimetres big, so um, good luck to Hero. <laughs> Now someone's about to come and collect you and take good care of you, huh? Sound alright? All the food you want, all the drink you want. It's like an all-expenses-paid junket. And they get those in politics. At the Bondi Clinic, Chris is confident Wayne is now in a stable enough condition to be handed over to rescue organisation Wires. Hey guys, thanks for coming Hi, in. Yeah, cool. Alright, so it's time to meet Wayne. Volunteers Katrina and Justin will be Wayne's new foster family. Oh, he's a young one. Oh, hello, Wayne. Right now, what Wayne needs is rest. He needs food, but also he needs 24-hour care if he's going to be any chance of getting through this. So he's had some fluids. He's had an X-ray, which was clear. Mm -hmm. Treated him for his parasites and also wormed him. So. He's all yours. Yes, oh, I'm looking forward to it. But look, he, the one thing we've really noticed is just, just how incredibly weak he is. Yes, so. they are usually very aggressive. He would be up on his feet now and yeah. want to have a... Have a bit of go out, I yes. Yeah, yeah. So look, if, if you could t take him in and oh, definitely. give him all the nutrition he needs and, and let him rest up. We've got some swimmers at home, so he'll have lots of company. Yes. Wayne now gets to swan off to five-star accommodation for swans with Justin and Katrina. From there, he's going to get his strength back, and then, and only then, Wayne, will he go looking for love. They're the doctor's instructions. Don't go looking for love unless you're ready, Wayne. It's going to take all your strength. Sorry about this, buddy, but um, it has to be done. At SASH, there's good news and bad news for the rock-eating hero. The good news, at just 12 months of age, he's avoided major surgery. The bad news? Unfortunately for Hero, he has a rock in his bottom and it's rugged and I don't think it's going to come out with ease. Now, he might lose his dignity while it's all happening, but unfortunately that's what happens when you eat rocks. I promise I will be as gentle as I can. But retrieving the rock without injuring Hero is going to be difficult. I'm just going to see what I can feel. Sorry, Hero. OK, buddy. Let's do it. it. feels rough. Oh. Ow. OK, I'll go slow. OK, Hero, I know. I know. It's really big, this thing. OK, hun. Okay. All right, Hero, just help me along. There's not much to go. I'm trying to grip this thing and I'm really trying hard not to hurt him, so I don't think it's as easy as I originally had thought. Jacey, come on. At the Bondi Clinic, Two very unique patients have an appointment with Chris. Come, babies. Josie and Chizzy's extreme makeovers are all part of a day's work for their owner, Christine. I have the grooming school, so I teach people how to groom their dogs. Hi, how are you going? Hey, how are you? <laughs> how are you going? Good, I'm, I'm Christine. Hey, Christine, I'm Chris. Hello, you two. This You're is from... um, Chizzy. Hey, Chizzy. And this is Josie. <laughs> They've come dressed pretty... the occasion. <laughs> They're pretty bright, aren't they? I love it. Yeah. All right, well, come on through. Come on. We actually don't get a lot of dogs that come in here with painted, sculpted fur possums attached to them. This is new. They look amazing. Thank you. These creative canines are here for their annual vaccinations. I'm just deciding to be charged for seeing one patient or, or two. <laughs> but first, Chris gets a rundown on these unique works of art. And it's the dream catcher from Possum Magic. Is there another creature on the other side? That... Yes, he's got a koala on the other side. He's just a, a walking Australian encyclopedia of, of mm. wildlife, really, isn't he? This creative grooming can really polarise people. Some people love it, while others seem to think it's quite ridiculous. 
I don't really have a problem with it because to me, it's just another way for people to show their love towards their animals. <laughs> I grew up with a poodle. Can I show you a picture of Claude? You can. Just let me know where I was going right or wrong. I used to have a poodle who I used to dress up in some pretty crazy gear. So maybe I'm not that different. <laughs> what do you think about that? It's very cute. How old was he? He was he was old enough to know that, that he shouldn't have been dressed like that. Yeah. And so was I. I was old enough to know I shouldn't have done it to him. <laughs> Hero. Feels rough. Oh, boy. Okay, I'll go slow. At Sash, Hero has avoided emergency surgery after swallowing a large rock. But he's now facing an uncomfortable procedure. Okay, Hero, I know. I know. Oh, okay, there's something. Oh, what that is? It feels like bone. There's more in there, so I'm going in again. Okay, so this is the big piece. Just slowly, slowly. Sorry, hero. Nearly there, I know, so I know. It's really big, this thing. I'm having a feel inside and it feels like this rock is pretty big and it's got some rough edges and I don't know how exactly I'm going to pull it out from hero without causing him too much discomfort. If you push, it would help. Just like giving birth. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Here we go. That's all right, hero. There you go. Oh, my God. That's a rock. How's that? I cannot believe that this rock was swallowed whole, passed through his esophagus, down his stomach, into his intestines and out the other end without causing any damage. That is a really, really lucky outcome. Okay, Hero, you see this? This is a rock. This belongs in the garden, not in your mouth or in your stomach or in your butt. Okay? Yes, thank you. You've done a very good job, my man. A very good job. Is that okay? It's gonna make it, I think. <laughs> Possum's okay. <laughs> Chris's consult with the perfectly coiffed poodles is continuing. So he looks pretty healthy, Great. as well as stunning. <laughs> He's all the parts. <laughs> so I'll give him his vaccination now. Great. There we go. Wasn't that bad? There we go. So this is Josie. Jos. So she is Mrs. Chizzy. Is that right? Yeah, they're friends. <laughs> friends. Close friends. Close friends. <laughs> Her boyfriend's more into fashion than she is. <laughs> yeah, he's got sort of more bling, hasn't he? Yeah, he does. <laughs> Questions are being asked about your man. Seriously. With the glamorous duo's health checks and vaccinations completed. Christine pulls out so one last surprise for Chris. <laughs> you know, a lot of other dogs would just shake those off straight away. But <laughs> you know that you're really working those, don't you? Yeah, she says I might as well milk it. They're both done. OK, thank you. All right. Come on. I think this creative grooming is fine, provided you're using it on the right sort of dogs. Poodles love to be fussed over, we will sit there all day, perfect for it. So if they like it, there's no problem really doing it for them, is there? Let's go. Good boy, come here, come here. Later that afternoon at Sash, Hero the Rock Eating Lab is finally ready to go home with his relieved owners, Michael and Sally. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I have a little present for you guys. Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh. Look at that, huh? Yeah. Dude. That is what came out. No, oh. You're yes. not eating it again. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> That's indeed you are. Oh. 
So what are we going to do about these rocks at home? Oh, we've got the landscaper coming in this weekend, yeah. so Clean they're going everything. to like getting rid of them. Yes. Yeah, and they're paving the whole garden oh. and leaving a little pit of like grass for him. Fantastic. Do anything. Right. Hero, we won't tell any of your friends what happened to you here. It can be yeah. our little secret, okay? Oh. Yeah. Oh. You just <laughs> wag your tail in my face. <laughs> yep. Yep. I know that area very well, so we'll just keep that butt away from me. <laughs> Thank you. Pity for them, they'll have to redo their whole backyard. It's going to cost a fortune and that's all because Hero has a taste for rocks. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content.